Welcome to Dialogue, I'm Yang Ren in Beijing. Despite thorny issues that dominate headlines from time to time, China and the United States have been able to work closely on major global agendas. With President Xi about to embark on his first ever state visit to Washington, what are the major concerns on both sides? How do we improve mutual trust and the framework of a new type of major power relations? And how do we avoid potential clashes between the world's two largest economies? Ahead of a President Xi's state visit, I'm honored to be joined by Chinese State Councillor Mr. Yang Jiechi. But before we get started, let's look at this. Two years after the landmark meeting between Xi Jinping and Barack Obama at the scenic former Annenberg Estate in Southern California, the Chinese President will pay his first state visit to the U.S. in late September. What new momentum has emerged in the relationship between the two world powers? 2015 marks the 70th anniversary of the birth of the United Nations. President Xi will address the UN General Assembly to commemorate the event. What message is he going to deliver? The two biggest economies in the world, China and the US, are also the second largest trading partners of the other. Will Xi's visit produce major progress in bilateral economic cooperation and trade? The Asia-Pacific has seen ups and downs of intertwined interests between Beijing and Washington. Can the two countries enhance trust and cooperation to resolve such disputes and safeguard peace and stability in the region? Welcome to Dialogue. Thank you. This will be the very first official visit by President Xi Jinping after he took office. What will be the major issues topping his agenda? First of all, let me say that China U.S. relationship has, on the whole, maintained a sound momentum of growth. And the two presidents have uh, stayed in frequent contact with each other, either through meetings or by correspondence. And there has been cooperation between the two sides on global issues like climate change and disease control. So against this backdrop, uh, the president will make his state visit to the United States later this month at the invitation of President Obama. And I believe that this is a very important visit because both countries are very important in the world, China being the largest developing country, the United States being the largest developed one. Both are permanent members of the UN Security Council. So there are a host of areas where China and the United States can and should cooperate with each other to promote peace, stability and development in various regions and in the world. How is this upcoming state visit by Mr. Xi Jinping different or special from the previous one in Sunderland, California last time? Well, this is an official a state visit. So a state visit uh, by its very sense, is uh, very important, and it's a comprehensive uh, covering of all the events uh, of China-U.S. relationship, I mean the major ones. So following up on their very substantive and productive discussions at Sunderland, California, and in Yintai, uh, Beijing, the two presidents will have in-depth discussion this time, first of all, I believe that they will further chart the course of China-U.S. relationship, particularly the new model of major country relationship between China and the United States. And then there will also be uh, lots of discussions on practical cooperation between the two sides. And I believe that some uh, substantive results will come out of that. The two countries will also do a lot for the Asia-Pacific region and for the world as a whole. By the way, I believe the president will reach out to a cross-section of the American society to get in touch with people from various walks of life to build up more bonds of friendship and understanding between the two sides. Do you think both sides, China and the U.S., have been able to reach a consensus about uh, uh, what kind of uh, major power relationship should be advanced in the correct direction? Mm -hmm. 
Well, at Sunderlands, as you know, the two presidents agreed to build a new model of major country relationship between the two countries, i.e. China and the United States. And this goal has been reaffirmed by the two presidents uh, thereafter. And if we look back on what has been achieved, we can call it a real early harvest. On the bilateral side, uh, our trade has been on the way up in uh, the year 2014, the two-way trade was about 550 billion US dollars, and the cumulative uh, investment both ways amounts to about 120 billion US dollars, and uh, there are many, many visitors crisscrossing the Pacific. From uh, Afghanistan to the Korean Peninsula, the two countries have worked in coordination with other countries for peace and stability and development. And particularly, I would like to point out that there was last year this joint announcement uh, between China and the United States to address uh, climate change. And the military ties between the two countries have been further built. And there is this new visa arrangement between the two countries, which actually facilitates visits by business people and students. So all this shows that a new model of major country relationship between our two countries will work in the best interests of China and the United States and for the rest of the world. What is important is really to adhere to the principles of avoiding conflict and confrontation and to respect each other's core interests and major concerns and pursue win-win solution. This year, 2015, uh, marks the 70th anniversary of the Second World War in the East. We were allies. China and the U.S. were allies uh, during the Second World War fighting Japanese aggression together. And this time around, uh, Mr. Xi Jinping will address the General Assembly in New York to commemorate the 70th anniversary. Can you brief us on the highlights of His Excellency's keynote presentation there? First of all, I would say that uh, you're absolutely right that we were allies during the Second World War against the Japanese aggression. And we will never forget this uh, friendship between China and the United States. And uh, after the war, uh, the United Nations was established. China and United States and other countries have been working within the framework of the international system and China itself has been contributing uh, to the building of the international system. So China is both a contributor and a builder of the system. Uh, we believe that the United Nations uh, being the most authoritative and representative governmental organization should play an even bigger role in maintaining world peace and promote development. And that's actually the expectation of the people all around the world. And this year happens to be the 70th anniversary of the founding of the UN. And I would like to tell you that the president himself will uh, go to the, a series of UN summits after his visit to the United States. And his presence there is a concrete example to show our commitment and support for the UN system. And the president uh, will, of course, address the general debate of the uh, United Nations, and he will expound on China's views on the uh, political landscape in the world and the order in the world. And he will also attend the uh, uh, post-2015 uh, Sustainable Development Summit. China and other countries contributed to the drafting of the document. So, by the way, I would like to say and tell you that uh, he and other leaders will witness the adoption of the post-2015 development agenda. And China has taken some initiatives on its own. The president and uh, Mr. Pan Ki-moon, the secretary general of the UN secretariat, will uh, uh, co-host a summit on women's empowerment and a roundtable discussion uh, for South-South cooperation. 
and the president, of course, will make some very important speeches on both occasions to show our further cooperation uh, with the rest of the world on these two major issues, and we we'll also uh, propose some very important actions uh, in the future on our own as well, uh, with, in conjunction with uh, the other participants. So this will be a very important uh, visit, and this will be the first appearance of uh, President Xi Jinping at the UN headquarters as the President of the People's Republic of China. As each other's uh, second biggest trading partner and the most important trading powers in the world, I, I believe um, both countries want to promote their business relationship. First of all, please allow me to say a few words about the international economic landscape and the Chinese economy. I believe uh, that the reality is there is a lack of uh, demand in the world and the performance of the major economies uh, and their policies varies from country to country. So the recovery of the economy after the outbreak of the uh, financial crisis seven years ago has not been as robust as people had expected. Nevertheless, uh, China has been doing its best. Let me say that we will continue with the structural reform of our economy so as to promote uh, economic activities in China, to lift people's living standards and to continue with urbanization. And we also encourage innovation and entrepreneurship uh, in China. So like any country, China has its own share of challenges and problems on the economic front. But I must say that the fundamentals of the Chinese economy are just fine. And any objective observer in the world we notice that and many people have expressed their confidence in the Chinese economy. Of course, this economy has many facets and one of them is foreign trade and uh, uh, investment from overseas. I must say that uh, China-US economic relationship has been a bedrock of uh, the progress that we have made I still believe uh, that the business community in the United States is very much interested in the Chinese economy, and they see a growing and expanding Chinese e economy, and there will be more and more opportunities for them, not only along the eastern shore, but also in uh, the hinterland of China uh, as well. Of course, on our part, we will do our best to improve the investment and trading environment here in China to further our efforts to improve IPR protection and so on and so forth. But I do believe that there is a good chance for people to make more um, progress in their business ties with China. Why? Because this is an innovative society. So apart from traditional trade, we are talking a lot about trade not only in goods but in services as well. And there is now more Chinese investment, at least last year, to the United States than the other way around. So jobs are created in the United States as well. So this kind of a good interaction uh, between the two business communities of the two countries will serve the best interests of our two peoples. And on the macro side, uh, the two being the two largest economies in the world, uh, they should have more coordination and consultation with each other. President Xi Jinping and his American counterpart, Mr. Obama, reached an agreement on climate change on sidelines of the APEC summit last year. Tackling climate change has been prioritized on the agenda of both governments. Uh, in addition, the latest breakthrough in the nuclear negotiations on uh, Iran's nuclear capability would not have been made possible without the effective cooperation between the U.S. government and the Chinese authorities. 
Now, do you think uh, this kind of a cooperation could serve as a new model in global governance? And do you think this kind of a positive cooperation would be extended to other areas in exercising our global governance? You are quite right that the joint announcement uh, to address climate change, uh, which happened last year, was well received by the international community. And I believe that climate change issues will be part of the agenda when the president goes to the United States for his state visit. Uh, the important thing is for us to work together with the international community to make the Paris conference a success and that will serve the interests of the world. There's a lot that we can do together multilaterally or bilaterally. As a matter of fact, uh, there has been a great deal of cooperation between the two countries in clean energy uh, field. About the Iranian nuclear issue, I must say that P5 plus one discussion with the Iranians yielded uh, good results. Uh, that is the joint comprehensive plan of action uh, with Iran. And of course, China worked very hard uh, with the United States and with the other partners. We do hope that uh, uh, this agreement will have uh, further good implications for the region as a whole. Uh, so all in all, uh, China-US cooperation at regional and global stage um, can be further promoted. And we should actually take a closer look at any kind of possibility of cooperation between the two sides to leverage our resources and to do the utmost. Because if China and the United States work even closer together, there's a better chance for addressing some of the urgent issues globally and regionally. Thank you very much. We have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching Dialogue with Seat Councillor Yang Jiechi. We should be back in a short while. Stay with us. Welcome back, Mr. Yang. Uh, some are saying that the disputes between the U.S. and China, particularly in the Asia-Pacific region, are forcing all other countries and players in this region to take side, and they are worried. Um, what's your take on the actual dynamics in this bilateral relationship between Washington and Beijing? Actually, it's in the very area of the Asia-Pacific where Chinese and American interests are most closely intertwined. And it is in this area where China and the United States interact the most. So I believe that the two sides um, have had a cooperation in many areas. Uh, some of them I've already mentioned. And I do believe that no country needs to take sides between China and the United States because President Xi said that we are working really for a community of interests. So if there are friends of China who would like to be friends of the United States or the other way around, both countries should welcome that. We should have more mutual friends. It's as simple as that. And I do believe that China-ASEAN relationship is on the way up, not only economically, but politically as well. And China and the United States should work together in more areas. For instance, uh, we are helping uh, Afghanistan to train more diplomats. And uh, we are also helping uh, Timor-Leste to have uh, more the food security. So in all these areas, we should really expand our vision and to see what can be further done, not only on a bilateral basis, but on a trilateral basis as well. Do you think we have a 
mechanism to manage the crisis uh, in the South China Sea between the two sides? Yes, I think uh, the uh, dual track approach is the right approach because, you know, at the beginning of this century, China and the ASEAN countries have signed on to this uh, declaration of conduct uh, for parties in Southeast Asia, which stipulates that the parties directly concerned should uh, handle their differences uh, through dialogue and negotiation. Uh, so the DOC is being implemented now to the benefit of all sides because it not only encompasses uh, territorial disputes, it talks about a lot of other things like uh, uh, maritime uh, cooperation, uh, rescue, search and rescue, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, China has been very active uh, in conjunction with the ASEAN countries to pursue on the basis of consensus a COC, Code of Conduct. And I believe that through sincere dialogue, ultimately, we'll be able to reach um, that agreement. Uh, let me say a few words on freedom of navigation and uh, overflight. Uh, as a big trading nation, China pays a lot of attention to freedom of navigation and overflight. And there is no problem with uh, regard to freedom of navigation and overflight. Do you think the frequent mill-to-mill -mill exchanges between the two governments would serve as a healthy barometer and to send a positive message to the rest of the world about the bilateral relationship? And are you confident that the two militaries will be able to manage their risks and uh, the growing uncertainty in some of the uh, areas where we have the dispute? Well, you have raised a very good point. I, for one, always believe that male-to-male -male relationship constitutes a very important facet of China-U.S. relationship. The good thing is recently we have seen continuous contact and exchanges between the two military. Uh, they have had uh, joint exercises, and even in the non-traditional areas, they have done a lot together in disease control, anti-terrorism, anti-piracy, and so on and so forth. So I do hope that there will be a, a continuous and increasing interflow of exchanges and dialogue and, and joint activities between the two military. Because only by doing that, you can deepen mutual trust and will uh, uh, help to push forward our overall relationship. Well, each day, people in their thousands are crisscrossing the Pacific Ocean and to promote mutual understanding. Do you think uh, in an age when people uh, from both sides are talking increasingly about trust deficit, the people-to-people -people exchanges uh, will help compensate for this? Uh, are you confident that this will be um, a hallmark in constructing the most important bilateral relationship? I do believe so. I still believe, and I think uh, in future, I will still believe in seeing is believing. Uh, despite the fact that we are in an information age, uh, but to immerse yourself, let's say, in the city life of another country for a Chinese to go to uh, the United States to go to New York or Washington or LA, San Francisco or Seattle, it will be a very worthy experience. Uh, the hustle and bustle of the city, uh, the smiles on the face of uh, the citizens uh, in, here in China or in the United States can tell a lot about what kind of society uh, they have. Uh, what's more, it's important for us not only to explore the West Coast and the East Coast of the United States, and I just encourage my countrymen to go to the Midlands, the heartlands of the United States. And the same can be said about American visitors uh, to China. And the good thing is now there are more and more grassroots contacts between uh, 
our two peoples. For instance, uh, there are about uh, 200,000 Chinese students uh, studying in the United States. There are about 5,000 Americans on our campuses. And they invariably not only have uh, contacts with their classmates, but with their classmates, uh, brothers and sisters and parents and so on and so forth, through which they can gain a better and a real understanding of the other country. So I believe that it's important to learn a foreign language, to know a certain country better, and uh, to have a friend from that country. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do appreciate your time and the views. Yeah.